my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be filming 50 facts about me diabetic style. So I'm going to be reading these from my phone. I'm just going to be saying like funny things and like neat things that are just interesting that have to do with my experience with my diabetes. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Number one is whenever I was little, I went so low that I had a hallucination and I saw popsicle monsters. So I know that, that sounds really funny and weird and messed up too, but um, it was like all of a sudden my blood sugar dropped and I was looking around and I was in my grandma's kitchen and I just saw like coming in the window these like honestly looked like cartoon characters. It was like a popsicle um, and it had big eyes and just like a scary like I don't know mouth on it and then they were just coming in at me like this and it was just like super weird and like everyone always is like what the heck whenever I tell them that but I don't know it was just really crazy and I remember that very distinctly and they gave me blue jello which was my all-time favorite to get my sugar back up so so number two is to get my sugar up really quick whenever I was little um, my grandparents when they watched me they would see that I was low and sometimes they'd say I was so low that I was like a rag doll because when I was little I couldn't like really identify that myself and say like hey I feel low or anything so I would just like be doing whatever and just kind of like be going low and low and then finally I would just kind of like not pass out but I would just be like limp or like I was just really low and they would pour um, syrup in my mouth so like pancake syrup basically and I know that that sounds like maybe gross my third fact is that I actually really loved that syrup and so four is when my blood sugars are high uh, that makes me feel either sick or drained or sometimes like crazy and hyper um, but that crazy hyper feeling is like more whenever I was young. Number five is whenever my blood sugar was really high one day, um, it was when I was younger, I got a McDonald's sweet tea without knowing that my blood sugar was high. And then uh, I went so much higher that I threw up and now I can't even really drink McDonald's sweet tea to this day, which is probably good for my blood sugars, but it's kind of sad if you no, if you're in the fam that loves sweet tea from McDonald's, I don't know. They're really good, but they're super sugary, so it's probably for the best. Number six is that the flu is literally the worst thing to have whenever you're diabetic because you just can't keep things down whenever you're low. Number seven is most doctors actually recommend a flu shot, and that's probably part of the reason why because of what I had just talked about, but um, I... I don't get a flu shot and literally every time that I'm asked by like a nurse or anything they're always like have you had your flu shot have you had your flu shot I don't get my flu shot because I've had a bad reaction to them and I know that, that can just be part of the immunization like I understand how that works because I literally just took a test on it in anatomy but number eight is my high school track coach went almost a whole track season without knowing that I was a diabetic because I forgot to tell him <laughs> I don't know through from kindergarten to eighth grade, like I was around the same people all the time because I was went, I went to a really small school. Then I went to high school and I guess I just automatically assumed, you know, cause it's just part of my normal life that I didn't have to tell anybody about it, which is a silly assumption, but I don't know. I just don't really share it. It's not really like the first thing I say to people like, hey, I'm a diabetic. Number nine is I was diagnosed whenever I was two. Number 10, my grandma is the one who actually figured that out. Number 11 is low blood sugars make me feel like I literally can't do anything. And sometimes I get depression-like symptoms, which really sucks. I don't remember ever having that until like whenever I went to college, but I just feel so overwhelmed. I feel like I can't do anything. Like everything just is like an automatic like no, and you can't. And it's just so depressing sometimes. Um, but then also I can be really goofy and like act kind of weird whenever I'm low too, like people have seen that. Number 12 is I've actually met a lot of people and gotten really close to people because of this disease. So like my nurse from grade school was actually the person who would take care of me before and after school because my parents couldn't pick me up right after school. So that was kind of cool. Like I really got to know her really well and she made me healthy snacks and I really love her. And I don't know, people just like had to know because like I was 
younger and like they had to be aware so they could like take care of me and I don't know it just kind of like brought me closer to people like that. 14 is that I've always worried that people will think that I'm faking it whenever I'm like low or high and thinking that I am just using it as an excuse so I try to keep it to myself until I can get something to eat or drink if I'm low. Do not do this. <laughs> like if you're a diabetic, don't do that because that's so bad. And 15, I honestly forget sometimes that I am a diabetic, you know, because sometimes you just don't think to tell people and it's just your normal everyday routine, um, which kind of goes along with 16. I just pull out my tester anywhere and I check my blood sugar and I forget that I can actually freak people out. Like if you don't like needles and stuff, because I have to like poke my finger in order to get my blood sugar reading because that's where you get the blood from and it just freaks people out maybe seeing the blood seeing the needle I don't know you don't really see the needle because it's in a little pricker but I mean I just forget about it sometimes and I do it just because it's something that I need to do and I don't think to like ask people if it's okay if I do it number 18 is I wear my pump on my backside so changing my sight of where the infusion set is um it usually has to be in private so yeah it's on my backside it's kind of like up a little higher but it is pretty much on my butt so that can be embarrassing sometimes number 19 is that i change my pump every three to four days number 20 is i've tried four insulin pumps in my life which is the omnipod the medtronic mini med there was another random one that had a really long needle don't remember what that was i think it was some kind of medtronic pump but not the mini med and then I also have the T-Slim, which that is number 21. So I currently use the T-Slim pump. I really like it. Um, and number 22 is I've used the Dexcom before. And of course, if you don't know anything about diabetes, you're not going to know what a Dexcom is maybe. But a Dexcom is something that is like on your skin. It looks kind of like a pump and it just monitors your blood sugar at all times. Number 23, diabetic supplies are expensive. If you know any diabetics or if you just want to Google it, it, it gets pretty pricey. Number 24, um, I've been on a pump since I was five years old, so hence why I've tried like four pumps, which is kind of a lot, you know, because they last a really, really, really long time. Like 25, I'm hoping to try the artificial pancreas in the future, so that's kind of like a big upcoming thing. I know some people are having like trial runs and stuff like that, but I'm hoping that I can do that eventually. Number 26, I am a type 1, so the cause of my diabetes is autoimmune, so it means that my body, for some reason, got a signal to attack my pancreas, and that's why it doesn't work. It's not cool that my body did that. Come on, body. What the heck? But I just think it's neat to learn how it happened. Number 27, type 1 and type 2 are often confused. Okay, so that is something that may not be just about me, but like... Um, when people ask me about diabetes or like when I say I have diabetes, a lot of times people be like, oh, my grandma or grandpa has diabetes, but I don't know if it's the same kind you have. Um, so it's just kind of like type one and type two, like people don't know that right off the bat sometimes. So that was just a fact I wanted to throw in there. Number 28, I just get really irritated whenever someone says like, oh, her diabetes is really bad because it's like diabetes isn't really on a spectrum it's not like oh I have I have it this severe and they have it that severe it's not like that if you have it you have it but you can struggle with it more because of your caretaking tendencies like if you don't take care of yourself very well then it could come across to people that you have some like that it's really bad but I don't know I know that I don't really get offended about much about my diabetes because like you know I'm an open book and I also don't expect the whole population to know about diabetes like I would just suggest saying it like they struggle with it a lot you know like that makes more sense but it just doesn't make sense to put it on a spectrum that's kind of what gets me a little fiery so number 29 I said that I've never really been made fun of about my diabetes and that's pretty much true but there has only been like two times in my life where somebody said some, some kind of comment, you know, and it's not like, like I say, I don't get offended. Maybe somebody has said something and I just like wasn't that offended about it. But someone was saying, we have to do all this stuff and you get out of it because you're a diabetic. And I don't want to talk too much about it because like I, 
I totally am cool with the person that said that but it just kind of bugged me at the time because I'm really self-conscious about that I'm really self-conscious about my diabetes I hate it when people think it's like an excuse or something and it's not for me if I am actually being held back from doing something it's actually really hurting me like mentally emotionally and probably physically because like a lot of times with track you know I would have to you know take a step back or sit back if my sugar was going low or high and it just really got on my nerves that somebody thought you know that like I was using this as an excuse and that I was so privileged because I couldn't do it and that like it really sucked <laughs> that I couldn't do certain things and then the other comment was somebody thought that my pump was a pager they were like who the heck do you think you are having a pager like do you think you're that important and that kind of thing kind of got under my skin because I was like first of all not a pager second of all I don't think that way I don't know it just was like wow you're coming at me i don't have a pager oh well, number 30 was basically that pager story um number 31 my friend told me that whenever i wore an omnipod which was a different type of pump they thought that the like pump site which i wish i could show you it um but it it's like a white like kind of lump that's on your skin and it looks like it really does look like this but he thought that i had a mcdonald's barbecue sauce cup taped on the back of my arm because that's where i used to wear it on the back of my arm and i think that's really funny because <laughs> it looks like it a little 32 even though i'm an, i'm a diabetic i have still done track in college and high school and i've traveled to africa too so basically that fact just is kind of demonstrating that like even though i'm a diabetic i've still done a lot of things and like i've never let myself be held back by di my diabetes like yes it has provided setbacks before but i still do a lot of stuff number 33 there are diabetic scholarships and i just filled one out just recently so if you're diabetic check that out and number 34 i have only met three diabetics my own age and two are at the same college as me but the one was in junior high maybe and we were at this 35 people think that i get offended when they ask me about my pump but i'm really not offended at all like at all the pager thing kind of got me but you know i don't know like if you see it and you're like oh what's that like and then i tell you that i have diabetes a lot of people are like i'm so sorry i am not offended i'm pumped i'm pumped that you noticed i'm pumped that i get to talk to you about it and if you have questions ask me i love them i love answering questions it's one of my favorite things number 38 most people don't know that i have it and that's actually pretty true i mean obviously my coach didn't know it for a whole like track season which is a long time number 39 my dad changed my pump for me for the longest time so whenever i was younger and like they were just learning about my diabetes and stuff like he did most of my stuff for me so i'm really thankful for that now that's not even a problem i do everything myself now but it was just really cool because he would help me out a lot especially when i got lazy and didn't want to do it um and number 40 my parents have literally been the best and the most supportive with literally everything and i'm just so blessed for them they have made having diabetes honestly feel like i'm just normal like i don't know they've never treated me different they've never like told me no you cannot have anything but my parents really let me do like what i could because my doctor told them like treat her like she's normal 42 i used to be embarrassed by saying that i have diabetes because i was afraid that people were gonna think that i have like type 2 which is associated with like obesity and i always was afraid because you know i've always been kind of like a little chunkier and type 2 is associated sometimes with um being overweight and you know I was afraid that they would think that about me. 43, I'm always afraid that people think I'm texting if I have to give myself insulin in class, which ugh, that always scares me. I always think like, oh shoot, like I'm sitting in class. I forgot to give myself insulin for this and I'm gonna go high if I don't give myself, you know, insulin. Hey guys, so my camera cut out and I don't know what happened to the footage, but number 44 was that my highest A1C was 11. And number 45 is my lowest A1C was 6.6. .6. And I talk about that a little bit in this next clip, and then I go on to explain the rest of the facts. Like I talked about the Arbon cleanse, it was super helpful and helped me get my A1C to be 6.6, .6, which is awesome. Number 46, I love my endocrinologist, and I used to think I wanted to be one. 47, uh, my ideal blood sugar range for me is between 100 and 160. Number 48, I've never been to a diabetic camp, which I think is kind of crazy. 
um, because I think that those are sound so cool and then I never took advantage of it so I'm really sad that I never did that number 49 um, I've mentioned this but diabetes makes dieting and exercising a little bit more complex and difficult sometimes I don't know it's just really frustrating but it's never truly stopped me and I promise myself that it will never stop number 50 diabetes is honestly such a blessing in my life personally because I feel like it's given me such a different perspective it's given me like a greater sense of responsibility sometimes and I just think that diabetes has honestly been something that like impacted my life because I really think it's sh helped shape who I am for the better and yes it does have its struggles and yes it does get frustrating but honestly I think that it makes me a stronger person I know that it's definitely not the worst thing ever I feel pretty strongly that like diabetes is probably one of the easier things to manage honestly um it's not always easy but you know like it could be so much worse and i just know that there's a lot out there and i just want anyone to know that's struggling with anything else or struggling with diabetes or anything that even though things get hard you can still try your best to find the beauty in the situation and i think that that idea has really helped me with diabetes and that's everything in my 50 facts about me if you guys have any questions or have any suggestions for anything comment down below if you haven't subscribed already hit the subscribe button down below and if you've made it this far thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you in my next video Mwah.